Hello, this is Jason Green with Zermo, and today we're going to talk about the Zermo application flow, which is an important basic concept that in order to effectively develop and customize on Zermo at a code level, this type of flow would need to be somewhat memorized and be able to be recalled on the fly. Um, one of the things to mention is that you should definitely make sure you go to eframework.com and review as much as you can on there about how the controllers and the web app works because Zermo inherits um, the, its application flow a lot from the Yi uh, framework. For example, we're going to say we're going to be editing an account. Um, and so actually if we just want to think about what the URL is going to have, the path is going to be uh, accounts default edit. That would be the path, which is an R is the variable, redirect there. And so what we'll do is we'll start by talking about the index file, which is index.php. And this is basically the bootstrap. So in here, uh, it's loading the config. It creates the uh, web app. All right, now the web application the web application then takes over and does a couple of things. For one, it authenticates the user. And there's several other things that it does that are important for the flow. The next piece is the begin request behavior. And really, the index and the web application files um, I, I don't really go in them very often at all. So I would say that those files are just things that you need to be aware of and understand what they do. Uh, the authentication I rarely deal with, but the begin request behavior, which is located in modules, Zermo, uh, components, is a file that does a lot of the heavy lifting for every page load. It, it loads the, it sets up the database, it loads the time zone, it loads uh, pagination information, it loads custom settings, um, it deals with making sure you're using the right browser. So I would definitely take a look at that file to get a better understanding of what's going on. Um, the next thing after request uh, begin request behavior is, is it does the routing. So route to controller. And in our example up at the top, uh, we have accounts. So our module is accounts. The controller is default. So actually that means in our example it's going to be the default controller.php which is located in the accounts uh, controllers uh, folder. And then you have edit which refers to the action. So it's, it's going to go to the uh, to the action I'm going to put this down here. It's going to go to action, edit. But before it goes to action, edit, there's actually something called the controller filters. And these deal typically with security. They're, they're filters that can be applied to a single action in a controller or across multiple actions in a controller. And one example would be if you're going to edit an account, something the folder does is it checks rights. You know, does this user have the right to access the accounts module. Now continuing down here, I'm going to scroll down. So now we're in action edit, and at this point, um, just go over here. So the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to do the model, and what, you know, it's going to uh, get the model. And there's actually another security check that occurs in this particular action. I'm going to ignore that for the moment. And then what it does is it will make a view, pass the model to the view, and the view takes over and that does the uh, render form layout. Okay, so in the view uh, for the edit, uh, the actual file would be the edit in details view. Well, there's an account edit in details view which extends edit in details view. And so you have render form layout, and then that's going to basically loop through the layout data from the view, 
And what it's going to do is for each of the attributes specified, it's going to create the element. And elements are like, uh, for example, an element for the text box, uh, an element for uh, the address. There's actually a special element for address. And um, sometimes you might have an element that uses a widget. So, for example, in the activities module, such as meetings, uh, there's a special uh, widget that's called for the, uh, the type ahead. When you're typing ahead... Um, So that it, it, it pulls up, uh, you know, one of the meeting attendees, for example, using the type ahead, and that uses something called a widget. Now, sometimes these widgets are also called directly from the views themselves, but this is a basic flow of what's of what's going on. And so, going back to the top, you know, you're starting with that index.php, you're creating the web application, it's doing authentication, it's doing a bunch of things in begin request behavior. Then it routes the controller. We go to our default controller and accounts, uh, modules, accounts, controllers, does its controller filters, calls the action edit, uh, gets the model, creates the view, renders the form, renders the elements, maybe renders some widgets sometimes. Other views might render the widgets directly uh, themselves. All right, the next thing I want to mention is because we did talk about the controllers and the controllers are a very important part of understanding what's going on is sometimes, for example, you might have something like the um, account uh, default controller. And this controller extends Zermo module controller. which extends Zermo base controller, which extends controller, which you'll find in framework controllers, which actually also extends something else, but isn't important for this example. Um, so the reason you have all this hierarchy is that a lot of methods are, are pushed back as much as they can so they can be reused. Uh, there's some protected methods which are not actions that you can call directly and those are also pushed back so just a lot of logic that's used across multiple modules multiple pieces is pushed back so I definitely recommend you take a look and start with like the account default controller and work your way back and just kinda of take a look and see at the different filters and the different actions and just get a get a feel for what's going on there but but to be honest most times with what you're doing you're only gonna to have to usually deal with um, the controller, the, the module controller, account default uh, controller. One other thing I wanted to mention is that the testing uh, aspect of the application uses a different bootstrap and actually there's an override begin request behavior that changes some of the uh, behaviors to be able to be testable and that's something I'll have to get into in a different video altogether. The next, the next example I want to do is I, I'd like to talk about just the basic login um, action, the, the flow for just when you lo load up the login screen. And so the basic uh, flow is, you know, you have your, your URL, which is going to, you're going to have a parameter, for example, r equals Zermo default login. And so it's going to go to the Zermo uh, default controller. Oops. There is an action login, which you will see. Zermo default controller is in module Zermo controllers. Action login. And then you'll see there's a login page view, which has login view and in login view you'll see an example where you see the form is being created and you have the layout also being done it's just kind of a basic flow of when you start with login where you're going and, and login is actually kind of unique in the way it is and the way it operates and it doesn't use metadata 
for the views like regular modules in the application do. Um, so, but this is a good example just to show logging.